I will get started in about a minute. Uh, in here to learn about employment rights for people with addiction histories with Stacy and Katie from Legal Aid and Work. This program is brought to you by the Business Science and Technology Center. We're located on the fourth floor of the main library. While we're closed to the public, you can reach us through the email, but um, just email bussitech at sstl.org. That's B-U-S-S-T-I-T-E-C-H at sstl.org. If you go to our homepage and scroll all the way down to support services, you'll see two blue tiles. One is for business and finance resources, and one is for job resources. So if you go ahead and click on the one that you want. In this case, we're talking about jobs. So we're at the jobs and careers resources page. Now, over on the left side, you'll see the red arrow is pointing to resources for groups. And one of those groups is for reentry um, individuals. So if you click on that, you'll see that we have a lot of resources listed for you that might help you in your job search. In addition, we have a lot of tools that you can use, um, other resources for um, helping you get a job. So check that out. We also have a lot of databases that can uh, help you gain skills, computer skills. Uh, all of these databases, or many of them, offer coaching on interviewing and job resumes sort of thing. Um, so please check out our databases. There's a lot of skills that you can pick up from them for free with your library. We have a lot of programs coming up at sstl.org forward slash events. Do check out our programs. On Thursday, we have LinkedIn for job search part one. This is a pretty thorough um, review of how to build your LinkedIn profile. On Tuesday, the 16th, we have SF We Serve First Impressions Program. This is a program that helps people who are over 50 and have a lot of job experience match up with the nonprofit to get work. On the 18th, we have LinkedIn profile tips for the job search as well. So this is another one that you can gain a lot of skills it, uh, for LinkedIn for building your profile in your job search. On the 18th, Thursday, we have a presentation from the Employment Development Department, Thursday Writing is Essential. Our partner, Smart Money Coaching, is offering a free webinar through March 31st where you can learn how to manage your daily expenses or learn about investments in retirement. This uh, webinar is free to attend. Wanted to let you know that we have, there are tax aid volunteers that can help you with taxes. I will send these slides out to you so you can get the information off of them. Also, um, Asian American community is being targeted for people scamming them in the COVID-19 vaccination. So we wanted to include this information for so that you are aware that this is happening and please stay safe. We do have limited library service while the library is closed to the public. It's called SFPL to go. Not all of our locations are offering this service, so please check our website when you can to see which ones are offering it. You can request materials from the library and pick them up at the location that are offering this. With that, I will turn the screen over to comments from the panel. Thanks so much. And I'm going to go ahead and um, get my screen sharing going here. Um, you just bear with this. Okay. 
Um, so welcome everyone. We're really excited to be here um, to talk to you about employment for people with conviction histories. My name is Stacey Villalobos and I use she, her pronouns. And I'm a staff attorney at Legal Aid at Work, which is a nonprofit here in San Francisco that does all employment related issues. I specifically work on issues of racial economic justice, which includes um, for us working with people with conviction histories. And I'm really excited to be with you all here. This is a very personal issue to me. I've had very, several family members who've been in and out of prison. And then like most of us, right, had to work um, and find work after being released and experience barriers because of that. And I'll pass it over to my colleague, Katie. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for getting up early and joining us um, this good old day. And again, like I said, my name is KD, it's Katie Dixon. I go by she, her, um, and as you guys can see, I'm the Fair Chance Community Organizer with Legal Aid at Work. I've been doing this for, um, I don't know, going on two, three years now. I've been here a little over a year. Um, I'm formerly incarcerated. I have spent a number of years in and locked in and out of the system. And I believe in this work right here because I definitely believe in employment and I believe that, you know, a stable, healthy job is definitely critical for us to get back on our feet. Thank you. All right, great. So with that, we're going to go ahead and jump right in and feel free, you know, we're a small group. So feel free to drop questions into the chat as we go and we'll try to answer them. And we're also going to save some time at the end um, to answer any questions. So we're gonna talk mainly today about the California Fair Chance Act, which is a law in California. Um, and before we jump into what that law says, I wanna recognize that this law was actually a product of organizing by directly impacted folks, um, led by a group called All of Us or None, which is a grassroots civil rights group made up of formerly incarcerated people and their family members. And so when people were coming home, um, they realized, hey, we're experiencing discrimination because of our records, and that's not fair. That's not okay, right? We've already paid whatever debt we had to society, and we shouldn't continue to experience this discrimination after coming home. And so after almost a decade or over a decade, just around there, of organizing and putting pressure on our elected officials to change that, we, we got this law. And so I just really want to recognize that this came because people who are impacted recognize this is unfair and it needs to also be illegal. So the Fair Chance Act uh, was a law that was passed in 2018 and it has three basic parts. And if you only remember one thing from this presentation, that's what Katie and I want you to remember, that there's three different parts and then that those parts are, it has a ban the box part, it has a fair chance process part and it has an off limits information part. And then we're gonna talk about the details of all of those um, in the slides that come. But if you only remember there are three parts and then you know you have these slides and can come back and look at the details then that'll be great. So the ban the box part is about um, how the employer, most employers in California can't ask about criminal history before giving you a job offer. Um, so this relates to the win. The fair chance process piece is around creating a process when an employer wants to take back a job offer because of your background check or because of your record. And that process is to include two key things. Notice, right? They have to tell you that they're doing that and then they have to give you an opportunity to respond. And then the off limits information piece is that there are certain types of criminal history information that cannot be considered. Okay, so first section, ban the box. And when this mostly applies is at the application stage and at the interview stage. So most employers in California are not allowed to ask you about your conviction history on a job application at an interview or run a background check before they actually offer you a job. And so all these questions that we're seeing on the screen right here, have you ever been convicted of a criminal, criminal offense? Check the box, yes or no. Have you ever been convicted of a felony? Have you ever been arrested? Check yes or no, that box, is banned. And I know you all are still seeing these on applications because we're still seeing them, but for most employers, these questions are illegal. All right, so now we're gonna do a little bit of pop quiz and there's gonna be a few of these sprinkled throughout the presentation. So I'm gonna ask you, I'm gonna read the question, read the answers, and then I'm gonna ask you to type in the chat, A, B, C, or D, what you think the right answer is. So the question is, when can a potential employer ask about a criminal record? Is it A, before giving someone an application, B, on the application, 
C, during the interview, or D, after offering someone a job? So I'm gonna to count to three and then you can type in the answer. One, two, three. All right, seeing lots of Ds. Some people may be not sure, they're not answering. Okay, I'll give you guys a few more seconds. I'll give you all a few more seconds, excuse me. Okay, yeah, so for those folks who answered D, that was right. Um, so remember, this is the ban the box piece, right? It, it says when is the important part about the ban the box. You can't do it up front. You can only out do it after you decide, I wanna hire you because you have all the qualifications. Only then can an employer actually get to see um, what's in your record. Okay, so moving right along, we're gonna go to the second part of the law, which is the fair chance process. And this is probably the most complicated process. Um, the most complicated piece of it. Um, and so this process was basically designed to make the employer reconsider, to make the employer rethink um, when they wanna take back your job offer, okay? So at this, play, at this stage, we're after the job offer, they've said, I wanna hire you, you're qualified. And then, and then they get to look at your background check. Then they get to ask you about your criminal history and, and you, know, you're, you have to disclose that. And when they look at your criminal history, the first thing that they have to do is do an individual evaluation, right? So you're more than your criminal record. So they have to look at you as a whole package um, and evaluate whether your specific convictions that you have are directly related to the job duties and look at how much time has passed since the convictions, right? So, um, you know, if I was robbing banks six months ago and I apply to work as a bank teller, it's gonna be pretty tough for me to pass this individual evaluation piece of it, right? But if I was robbing banks six months ago and I apply to work as a stock person at a cashier, at, um, at a grocery store, I'm sorry, um, a stock person at a grocery store, or if I apply to work as a software engineer, right, that bank robbery has nothing to do with what my job related duties are gonna be now. So if they decide based on that individual evaluation that your convictions make them wanna take back your job offer, they have to go to the next step, which is the initial written notification. And so that's if they decide to take back your job offer, they have to tell you specifically what's the issue. This conviction, Stacy, for two, in 2016 that you have for theft is the conviction that I have an issue with. They can't just say your background check came back and it's a mess and we're not gonna hire you anymore. They have to say this specific conviction. And then they have to give you a copy of any background check that they used. And then this is where it's your time to change their minds. So this is, they have to give you this opportunity to respond of at least five business days. And that response can look like a few things, which Katie's gonna go more into detail at the second part of this presentation, but high level, it can include evidence of background check errors. And let me tell you, those are very common. Evidence of rehabilitation or circumstances of the crime or your current life that should make them reconsider. And then after you submit that, the company has to do another evaluation and decide whether or not your convictions still justify not hiring you. And if they do, then they have to give you a second final written notification telling them about telling you about their final decision and telling you about your right to file a complaint with the government about their decision. Okay. So here's an example of what this uh, initial notice can look like. And this is what it should look like. This is not necessarily what they will look like. A lot of times client, my clients just get ghosted by an employer, right? After they get their background check, they don't do any of the process piece. That's probably more common, but when they do it and when they do it right, this is what it looks like. It tells folks you have five business days. You can include evidence challenging the accuracy of criminal history, showing rehabilitation um, or mitigating circumstances or both. And then it gives you some examples of the types of things that you can submit. And then we're moving right along to the third piece of the law, which is off limits information. And so most employers can't ask for, or even if they accidentally get this information, use the following types of criminal history information. Arrests that did not result in convictions, except if the case is currently open. So if you were ever arrested for something and then the charges were dropped, you were never convicted of that. Or if you were arrested for something and you pled to something else and those other arrests, then you weren't convicted for it, employers can't use that. The only exception is if you're currently going through the process right now, um, the criminal system process, um, and the case is currently open, then employers can use that. If you went through, 
any pretrial or post-trial diversion program, um, which oftentimes comes up with like DUIs or drug court where there's some sort of diversion set up so that you can do something, um, take a class or participate in some sort of rehabilitation program that will avoid a conviction. They also can't use judicially dismissed convictions, which are oftentimes called expunged convictions. So if you've gone through some sort of clean slate or record clearing process, same thing with certificates of rehabilitation, which is another sort of record clearing process. If you've gotten your convictions judicially sealed, employers can't use that. Or if you've gotten a pardon from the governor or from the president, employers can't use that. Employers also can't use anything that happened in juvenile court. And then employers also can't take into account minor marijuana related convictions that are more than two years old. In San Francisco, we also have a local law that says that um, employers can't take into account infractions, so anything below a misdemeanor. All right, so now we have another pop quiz. So get ready to type into the chat. I'm gonna read the question and then I'm gonna count to three and then I'm gonna ask you to put in your answer. So the question is, can an employer run a background check on me? What do you all think? Yes, no, maybe. I'm gonna count to three, one, two, three. Okay, so I'm seeing a lot of yeses. Okay. Uh, so yeah, that's right. But it's a little bit of a trick question um, because remember that it's only after the job offer, right? Because we ban the box. So they can't ask about it at the front end. It's only after the job offer that they can ask. Okay, I have one more pop quiz. Can an employer ask me about past arrests? So I'm gonna to count to three, one, two, three. Okay, I see a, a private message that says yes. Someone else saying no. What do other folks think? Someone else saying no. Someone else saying no, okay. Uh, yeah, so it's no, right? But again, there's an, ex there's an exception unless the case is currently open, right? So again, it's a little bit of a trick question. Um, oops. So now let me ask you, uh, can an employer ask you about dismissed convictions or expunged convictions as they're, as they're often called? Count to three, one, two, three, what do folks think? Someone says yes, someone says no, someone says no. Okay. So the answer is no. And that's a really good reason, right, to go through a clean slate, a record clearing process, because employers can't ask about these um, at all. Yeah, creative employers, so I'm seeing from Joseph, creative employers can get around these, they can Google, et cetera, that's absolutely right. Even if they get this information though, remember they can't use it. So if they, and, and now because of the fair chance process, right, they have to tell you, I'm taking back your job offer because of this conviction, right? So if they tell you, hey, Stacy, I'm taking back your job offer because I found this on Google that you were convicted of robbery in 2012, and you can say, no, look, I got that expunged, then they can't use that anymore. And yes, Lauren, this is in California. There are also other places that have similar laws, but the details are gonna be a little bit different. Um, so this is all across California. Um, the law that we're talking about. And there's also a specific San Francisco law that goes a little bit further, but it's pretty much the same. Okay, so this is a summary of everything that we've talked about. So this is another um, resource for you. If you're, you, if you remember, you know, the ban the box, the fair chance process and the off limits information piece, you can go back to this page, which is on our website, which I'll drop in the chat in a second um, and look up, oh, here are the specifics of this. And with that, I'll pass it on to Katie. Thank you so much. And again, thank everybody for joining us this morning. <clears throat> Navigating the fair chance process. So we are going to take a look at, like Stacy said, what does it look like to navigate the fair chance process? What is rehabilitation and all that kind of good old stuff? Let me see, next slide, oh, right here. Okay. So navigating the fair chance process, one of the one of the most important things to do is get ready now. And when you participate in webinars like these, you know, you're educating yourself. So this is absolutely a critical start for getting ready now, you know, and we're going to take a look at 
how do you continue to get ready throughout your um, process of navigating this? We're going to take a look at your personal statement, what that could look like, you know, what sort of letters of support we want to be submitting um, when we are, you know, responding to that notice and what kind of criminal court documents and how, and how they look, you know, so we're going to take a look at this stuff. So getting a copy of your records, this the criminal, some of the criminal court documents that we're talking about, um, you know, because again, you got cases that's been dismissed, you have, um, you know, some errors on there. These are things that, you know, when you get a copy of your record that you want to be looking for. Um, let me see, what does that say? Or people with felony convictions banned from jobs in healthcare with... Of course not. Um, but we're going to address that. Um, we're going to address that, though. Um, and so, yes, how do you get a copy of your criminal court document? So that other slide we saw that right now you can. You can go on some of the DOJ websites and you can request your own these days. It's really not all that hard. If you can get your low, you want to start with a local rap sheet first. And then you absolutely want to be getting your California DOJ rap sheet as well. The next uh, most easiest way that I really just love to point out for folks is you want to ask for a copy of your background check from the employer. Um, and this is, uh, if I'm not, this is prior also to the California Fair Trust Act. This is a part of the Fair Credit Reporting Act that they um, have to give you a copy of whatever information that they dig up on you. It's a little box like at the end of, you know, the application, like right after you sign on to giving them permission to run a background check, there's also going to be another question that says, you know, if you would like a copy of your background check, click this box. It's going to say if you're in the state of California, blah, blah, blah. And it's going to be like some little explanations. That's the box you want to click. You're going to automatically get the same information that that specific employer had generated as part of their background check process to use to use it against you or for you. Thank you. Okay, now rehabilitation. So at first we talked about, you know, some criminal court documents and how to get access to those and what they could look like. The next piece that I believe is really critical that I think um, a lot of folks, not a lot of folks, but people are slowly starting to pay attention to is what can be submitted as evidence of rehabilitation. And I just love to let folks know because I'm formerly incarcerated and I definitely have to navigate this process. We're not selling ourselves short, okay? We want to be including your certificate of completion from your residential drug treatment program, okay? That is very important. Up here, you can see we got an anger management certificate up there. Right here, you see this community service worker. All that stuff you want to submit as evidence of rehabilitation. Yes, this community service login sheet is important because that shows consistency. That's showing the employer, I'm going to be here every day, on time, willing and ready to work. You know what I'm saying? Also, it's community service. It also shows that it's not just about me. I'm willing to go above and beyond, okay? Um, and so your Solano Community College, of course, you didn't went back to school. You didn't got your GED. You got your AA degree, vocational certificate. You went through the PG&E program. You went through the construction pre-apprenticeship. You want to submit all that stuff as evidence of rehabilitation. We're not selling ourselves short. I can't express that one enough. Sorry about that. Um, okay, <clears throat> personal statement. Now, the reason why we love this template and we was definitely appreciate of getting this template um, from some of our other partners that we've been working with because this can be really intimidating sometimes, um, the personal statement. A lot of times, you know, for folks that just got out or for folks that may be, you know, maybe you had that one job for a while and now you're back on the market. So now you got to redo this again. This could be a little intimidating. It could throw you off. And so this template really just gives you a nice outline on just a good structure on how you want to get something going for yourself. You want to discuss the what, when, just the basic facts. Take responsibility and show remorse. You don't want to be up in there talking about, you know, when I was 15, I robbed the old lady in. That sounds bad. You don't want to be, you know what I'm saying, telling your whole life story. 
you want to stick to the facts. What happened? I was charged for um, burglary and that was in 2012. And then you want to move on to taking responsibility and showing more what you learned, some mitigating circumstances and what the situation, what the situation taught you. It taught you that you need to be out here having a job or it taught you that how your actions affect the community. That kind of stuff is very important. Okay. You want to discuss accomplishments social and community ties we talked about programs completed outside what about programs that you completed inside for people that just came home that stuff is absolutely important previous employment i think that's going to be a no-brainer um education again you completed your high school diploma you just got the construction apprenticeship program that's our education. And then you want to close with relatable skills and, you know, just restate your quality, share values and relevant skills, um, your commitment to your work, family, community, et cetera, personal strength. You're a great hard worker. You're dedicated to this job and you want to let them know you're a good candidate because you know why you're a good candidate. And right here, um, you know, just please take a look at this real quick. This is a sample letter from a real client, you know, this sample letter really just kind of shows a good way to get your stuff started. You know, it, it talks about what happened from when I was 18 till I turned 25. I was struggling with drugs. You know what I'm saying? It goes on to say how I regret this period of my life and I take full responsibility. After my most recent conviction, you know, I entered a, res a residential treatment program. I completed that program and been clean for five years. Okay. He goes on to talk about getting a high or she getting a high school diploma and now volunteering with the organization that mentors young men and women that's going down the same pathway as me. So this is a really great, just quick little sample letter of how you can get a letter structure for yourself. The personal statement is very important. And here is another good example. Um, and this one is um, structured similarly. In 2012, I was convicted for grand theft and was sentenced to three years. During my incarceration, this is where they take responsibility. You know, I realized how my actions hurt others and I learned that I need to overcome the urge for instant gratification. This, this person goes on to talk about how they discovered learning for technology after, um, you know, applying themselves to all the available classes in engineering, grateful to have received extensive training, okay? Worked as a mechanic and they are really excited to apply for this job and this opportunity to work for this particular company. This is a great example of how you wanna end it by getting personal, what you've done, talking about your qualifications. Again, promoted after a hard year of work and you excited to work for this company. That's how you wanna get personal, okay? And another thing that I want to point out too, we 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 Stacy shared the toolkit um, earlier while we were going through some of the other resources. The toolkit is definitely hands on, it's interactive, it's a fantastic um, resource that um, we put a lot of work and effort into. We work with some partners, and we really set this up to be super duper interactive and supportive for folks at various different stages of your employment journey because everybody didn't just come home you know you got folks as seasoned you've been working for five ten years and maybe you're going for a promotion or something like that and maybe since you've been home a long time you you don't feel like it's important to go ahead and go through a clean slate clinic because you've been home or maybe you just haven't wrote um, a sample letter or something like that. So this stuff is in a toolkit. All this stuff is going to be in your toolkit. It's going to have a structure. It's going to have some fill in blank stuff. So we really encourage you all to take a look at the toolkit. Um, it has a lot of good information and it has a lot of stuff we're covering today. These are also just more sample letters of what you can find in your toolkit. Sample letters from service providers, folks that's providing job training, education, the stuff we talked about, volunteering. There's all sort of sample letters in the toolkit that you could take to a job training supervisor and say, hey, you know, I'm trying to go for this job. Here's a little sample letter to help you structure a little letter to help support me. You know, you want to make it easy for the people that you're going to ask for help. Again, you've been volunteering. We have a sample letter in there that you can go to ask your volunteer coach or your volunteer person to get a letter together for you. Again, you want to make it easy. Sometimes folks is busy. Maybe that's not in their scope of work. And if you've come into them with a sample letter, 
that's showing how proactive you are. And again, making it easy for somebody to support you. That goes a long way. This is one of my favorite parts right here. Um, common violations. You know, I think a lot of us, um, you know, a lot of us really, it's hard to read the background checks. You know, again, you don't really know how to access it. That in reading, reading the background check can throw you for a loop. It looks, it got you looking bad. Now you're thinking about, you want to kind of stay focused on some of the common violations when you receive this background check while you're looking for a job or whatever it is going through a clean slate clinic. Asking about convictions on job applications is one of the common violations that you're going to encounter when you're navigating the process, okay? Conducting a background check before a conditional offer and employment is made. You know, again, that stuff is still happening. We know we're still seeing that in the field. It is still happening. That's illegal. Stating that no individuals with conviction will be hired, you know, on job announcements. It says no felonies and stuff. That stuff is illegal. Those are blanket bans and that's illegal. Considering off limits information like convictions that have been dismissed. That's illegal. That's a common violation. The wrong process or no process at all you know, for taking back a job offer. That's really common. You know, Stacy mentioned it earlier. A lot of times people get ghosted. You never hear from the employer again. An employer doesn't provide a copy of the background check. So a lot of employers are missing that step. You know, whether you check that box or not, they still have the obligation to, if they're gonna take that job offer back to supply you with a copy of the background check. And then employers are failing to give folks that five business days to review and respond to the notice. If you're paying attention, you will get the adverse action notice and the final rejection notice within one day or two of each other. And that's illegal. That's in violation of the five business days. <clears throat> okay. We've talked, uh, no, we haven't talked about some of this. So Documented potential violations. You know, right now, a lot of stuff is digital. You got, you know, so you want to definitely be on top of this stuff ahead of time. You want to make sure whatever, however you're applying for the job, you want to take screenshots of your completed application. You want to be taking screenshots of the letters or whatever that you get back from that employer. Taking a photo if you are receiving something, you know, through the mail or something like that. Scanning documents to make sure that you're being able to save these documents to your own personal email or, you know, um, scanning it to, you know, for folks that are tech savvy, if you have external hard drives and, and you know how to utilize that type of stuff. Um, we recommend documenting all communications, you know, including job offers, the conditional offers, document and save all this stuff, the pre advance action letters, you want to be hitting save on these emails and stuff like that. And any other communications related to your criminal record, or your final hiring decision. You also want to document like um, if you're receiving emails from a particular HR representative. That's another common violation we're seeing. A singular HR representative who don't know the law speaking for the company when that ain't really even the policy. You talking about, well, we don't hire felons and that's not even the policy nowhere on the books. And now here you didn't lost a job and now we out here searching and firing. And then you like, well, who told you that? And now you got to figure out it was John who worked. You want to document those emails from those singular HR representatives because a lot of times, you know, I want to get a benefit of the doubt. Maybe they just don't know the law, you know. Take notes of communications. You know, when did they ask about your criminal record? Was it during an interview? Did they say it in person? All that's considered before the job offer. You want to make these notes. Again, save emails and letters and take notes of phone calls, date and time. Again, who you spoke with. Was it John Jay from HR? And what, what kind of comments was John Jay making? Standing up for your rights. This was built into the law because like Stacy said, this was this law really was all, almost a two decade effort of organizing at the various different levels by people with criminal records who had been through the process and was fed up with some of these roadblocks. And so that's how some of this stuff got built into the law. Prepare, prepare, prepare. Again, getting informed like you're doing today participating in clean slate programs, getting your records, drafting letters, saving stuff, that's preparing yourself 
to stand up for your rights. Documenting what's happening. We just talked about that. That's preparing yourself to stand up for your rights. Responding to the employer. Knowing your rights, checking for errors, and sending in your letters of support and personal statements. That's all in preparation of standing up for your rights. You know what I'm saying? And that's a component that we want you guys utilizing because, you know, it, it, it was a real fight to get this stuff included in there. And what good is the law if we're not going to exercise it? You know, and that definitely leads me to this next box, which is following a complaint with the Department of Fair Employment and Housing, that's the DFEH, or whatever the local agency is, um, because some local cities have a little bit stronger ordinances and a designated like area to respond and handle these complaints. And then you also wanna turn to your community. Um, you got, right now you have three years, you know, to file with the DEFH. And that's important because I know in my case, when I got denied the job, I got ghosted. I was in survival mode. You know, I had only been home like a year or two. So I didn't have the time or the luxury to be going back and forth and trying to let you know this, that, and the other and trying to pull again. I needed a job. So I had to just roll with the punches and got back out there in the field and continue looking for a job. You know, and and, and sometimes it's, it's heartbreaking and it does throw you for a loop and it can sidetrack you when you get denied this job and you out here in survival mode, you get these bills paid. And so, um, you know, back in the day, I would have lost that opportunity. Now you have three years so you can go ahead, get you another job, collect your bearings, get on your feet, and then come back and file that complaint against whoever that employer was. And lastly, but not least, I mentioned a little bit, turn to your community and for the support that you need. You know, all of us are none. You know, we got our Inland Empire um, Coalition on here. That's our folks down south. There's plenty of resources here in the Bay Area. The library has plenty of resources on there that they can share with you. Root and Rebound. There's plenty of resources, okay, that, you know, you want to turn to your community to get the support you need to stand up for your rights. Sorry if I dragged it a little. Okay. Now we 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 built this to be interactive and we want we want folks to participate. And so we have a role play here, okay? Um, and we would like a volunteer to, you know, like raise your little hand or unmute yourself um, to answer the question. I'm gonna go ahead and read the prompt for the role play. Um, and again, we would like someone to volunteer. Um, I think they, they have some sort of little hand raise. I think they got a hand raise option on there or you can just unmute yourself and say, hey, I'd like to do it. Um, and if not, um, I'll give a practice response. Um, okay, so here we go. You're at an interview for a job as a forklift operator. The interview is going great, but then the manager asks you, is there anything going to come back on your background check that I should be concerned about? You have 2014 convictions for robbery and possession of narcotics. What can, the question is, what can you say in response? What can you do after the interview? Okay, I want folks pay attention to, you know, there's some keywords in there, okay? You at the job for a forklift operator and you have convictions for robbery and possession of narcotics. This is 2021, we're gonna go with this year. And remember, those are 2014 convictions. Let me see, does anybody wanna to volunteer to give a practice response? We're not looking for nothing perfect. We're just looking for courageousness. Me. Uh-oh. I heard of me. Yeah, right here. How you doing, Jerry? Yeah, fine. It's... All right. What do you think you can say in response to this? Uh, I, that, I believe I can say no. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. No, you have an answer, right? That's an illegal question. Yeah, because I, I'm understanding from what Joe just went through that the uh, it's like nothing related to me being a forklift or a thing, anything of that nature. And from the year, this is 2021. That was 2014. From my understanding, so by my understanding, things that y'all just stated, I, I, I believe it's in well my right to say no, right? I'm not for sure. Yeah. But, uh, totally. Absolutely. Right. Um, it's definitely, it's a brave, 
thing to say, right? To be like in the middle of an interview, no. Would anyone else take a different tact or does anyone else have other ideas of what you could say? There's the, the nice part about this is that there's no right answers, by the way. There are all many right answers, but there's no wrong answer. Yes. And what about after the interview? We want to make sure we document what happened. And after the interview, we want to make sure we submitting, you know, our evidence of rehabilitation and stuff like that. But absolutely, um, you know, so this definitely, you, he, you nailed it. You know, Jerry nailed it. First and foremost, this is a forklift operator. My convictions for robbery and narcotics, that's not a directly related conviction. And yes, that is, I think that's seven years, ain't it? From 2014 to 2020 six or it's almost at seven so yes that's six years ago a lot of time has passed since then so absolutely um uh and absolutely so that's a brave answer and i like that answer let me see what we got next nobody else want to take a stab that's okay okay again here's a recap so if a, if an employer asks about your criminal history on the application there is no right way to answer this. You know, um, this is what I really like to say to people, you know, be, be truthful, you know, because for me, you know, you don't want to lie, you know, you, but you do want to know your rights. You know, um, I think for me, again, the, the, the interview going good, I, it depends on the job, my qualifications, how I feel about, you know, this person, because they are asking me an illegal question. This is before the offer has been made. Um, it depends on how bad I want that job, you know, and again, how, you know, how, how it's going, you know, maybe I will say, you know what, back in 2014, I do got this little robbery conviction, but sir, I'm here to tell you right now today that that don't have nothing to do with me supplying as this forklift operator. I've had my forklift license for blah, blah, blah years, no accidents. I've gave it back to my community. So it depends on the job, how bad I want that job the vibes, how it's feeling up in there, you know, so there's no, there's no right or wrong answer. Um, if it's just, you know, if, if, if I'm feeling like I'm just going to say no, and I'm going to let you go ahead and run your background check and do what it is that you're supposed to be doing. So it's no right answer. Um, so some more components. So read the question when you're filling out the application, read the question carefully. Have you ever been convicted of a felony? Or have you ever been arrested for a crime in the last seven years? You know, you want to read the question real carefully. That'll help you figure out whether you should be checking yes or no on that box. Um, think about your conviction history. You know, some of us can't remember, like, I know for sure right now, I'm pushing nine years in my criminal history. So I'm feeling very confident these days. I'm checking no, 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 no. Okay, I'd have been through some clean slate clinics. For me, I'm checking no on everything. Absolutely. So if you think about your history, you know, now if you know you got something about a year ago, you, you check yes. You know, check yes. You don't want to be lying. Remember your options. Don't be afraid to, you know, when you in that situation, you figuring out what they asking you. Remember your options. You have a process built into this. They can't just deny you the job because you checked yes on that application. That's old and that's not true. That's no longer true no more. And a lot of people still believe that that's not true. My gentleman who asked about the healthcare industry, I did see Stacy answered it for you. No, folks are not automatically barred from those jobs. The laws is changing right now. Um, you know, there's exempt, they're, they're making the, the exemptions used to really like take a long time. And that kind of was causing people a job. There's new laws to help refine and change that to where it's folks, if you already been in that field, you know what I'm saying? You can apply for a quicker exemption to allow you to get various jobs at the healthcare industry. Um, there's new laws going after, I'm not going after, I don't want to say it like that, but there's new laws aimed at changing around licensing. So we really focused on the level of licensing people can get within the healthcare facilities. I mean, excuse me, the healthcare field, I know it's more than just facilities. Um, so absolutely, there's a lot of laws going on so you know you 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 got options and don't and and then legal action remember we talked about filing with the DEFH that's built into the law that's your right don't be afraid to take legal action and again you got up to three years now okay 
Um, we went over this about if an employer acts during an interview, you know, again, it depends on, you know, where you at your career, how bad you want that job, the vibes and how it's going and practice, practice, practice. You know what? I've, I've, I've practiced in a mirror, you know, this question, you know, because you get the stuttering and talking fast and stuff like that. Practice. You know what I'm saying? We got a couple of little examples down here. Um, you know, like I said earlier, yes, I do got a robbery in 2014 and back in 2014. But what I can tell you is that that has nothing to do with my ability to show up to work and work hard for you at this company and blah, whatever it is that you're going to come up with is going to sound great. I know everybody is. <laughs> Yes, definitely. What they say right here? No, you definitely don't want to be oversharing. Absolutely. And that's why we are against um, um, uh, volunteering information. Absolutely. Oversharing. Like I said earlier, you get the stumbling. Now you talk about how you robbed the old lady and knocked her over the head. That ain't even, that's over. That ain't, you know, you, you little, you're nervous. So absolutely. we. And that's why you want to practice. Practice your response. Practice makes perfect. I just want to point out that all these different responses here are from real clients, right? And so they're, you know, answers that we've sort of developed in, in relationship with folks. Um, and you can see people took very different approaches, right? What I can tell you is that there's nothing in my past that would keep me from doing this job well. That's basically saying, no, I'm not going to answer that in a nice way, right? Or regardless yeah. of what's in my past, I know I'm qualified for this job and could perform it with excellence. Same thing. Someone who's more direct, someone who take more of a Jerry route, right? I think that under California law called the Fair Chance Act, you're not supposed to ask that question at this stage, which is similar, right, to what Janice dropped in the chat. I'm surprised you're asking questions like this in an interview as these types of questions aren't allowed until an offer is made. I and love then, all these responses. Yeah, and then the, 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 the kind of version that Katie was talking about, right, where you say, I do have some convictions. You don't have to disclose that at this stage, right? The law says... That's what the right the law gives you. You don't have to disclose that. But if you want to, you still can. If you want to just know, like, look, I just want them to know because I don't want to waste my time here. You can tell them. But it's important not to overshare, right? Remember that at this stage, they haven't seen your background check. So they don't know what your convictions are. They might ask after you share this, right? I do have some convictions. They might say, well, what are those convictions? Which, again, would be an illegal question. But you don't have to tell them necessarily, even if you are going to say I have something on my record, you don't need to tell them what it is, you kind of have to make all those decisions for yourself about like, you know, what, what do I want to tell them up front and what do I not you have the right to not tell them anything. Um, but we know that you know that right might not be something that you um, that's going to help you get that job, basically so. Absolutely. I think my favorite one, though, is what I can tell you right now is that there's nothing in my background that'll stop me from doing this job well. I like that one. That's my favorite. <laughs> and so here, I, we just wanted to briefly go over um, the, the complaint form. So this is the first step of filing a legal complaint um, with the agency. And it looks a little complicated. It's actually pretty simple. And at the end of the toolkit, too, there's like a annotated version of this where it says it has like little bubbles on the side that tells you here's what you fill in here and here's what you fill in here it basically just asks you for complainants information so that's you the person making the complaint it asks you whether you need an interpreter it asks you some questions about whether you're out on bail or released on your own recognizance pending trial which is related to an exception in the law and then about um, positions at certain facilities healthcare facility farm labor job or a law enforcement position with the state criminal justice agency. And so those are agencies that are highly regulated um, where there's sort of, it's harder to get a job, honestly, but it doesn't mean that you're not gonna be able to get a job there. And then the respondent section is just the company, right? Who is the one who violated your rights? And then on the other side, it just asks you to check a box to tell us what right was violated. Um, and that's all you really have to do. This is, all, there's a, it's an 11 page, total intake, but a lot of it is optional. And these are basically the, the parts that are required. And the potential benefits of filing with the DFEH, which is the, again, the state government agency. In San Francisco, we also have a local agency called the Office of Labor Standards Enforcement. Um, you have a lot shorter to file with them, but if, if the employer or the job that you're applying to is in San Francisco, you can also file with them, but you only have 60 days. With the state agency, the DFEH, you have three years, like Katie told us. Um, and so some benefits of doing that um, is one, you're standing up for your rights, right? Two, you're holding employers accountable. So, you know, like 
you were held accountable for breaking the law, right? They should be held accountable for breaking the law too. And three, you could just, it can be as simple as getting an explanation, right? So some of my clients who've been ghosted, they're like, I don't know why they did this. Like we were, everything was good. And then they just stopped answering. And so it, this at least forces the company to come to the table and tell you why um, they, they didn't, you know, they didn't want to give you the job anymore. More tangible benefits, more, right? more concrete benefits is you can actually get the job, right? And that's happened to some of our clients. Um, you can also get back pay, so, so lost wages, basically, or other monetary compensation. You can also change the practice and have training at the company for all the HR folks or hiring folks who were involved in the process and who did you wrong, so that this doesn't happen to anyone else. We also wanted to share some resources. So here's some record clearing resources, right, to go through and get your, your convictions expunged or to get the certificates of rehabilitation, to get all that type of um, record clearing that moves your criminal history information from something that employers can use into the off limits criminal history information category. So the SFPD's office does this and rebound and then clearmyrecord.org. Um, you can also come to, we don't do record clearing stuff, but we do all employment stuff. So you can come to Legal Aid at Work and we have a workers' rights clinics, including right here in San Francisco, where you can call and get one-on-one -on -one appointment with a legal counselor and get sort of tailored information and advice for your situation. And then here's some more resources. At the top is the agency, the California government agency that um, handles these responses. We have Goodwill San Francisco, where you can go through to for job development um, and help with finding a job. Root and Rebound, which is another legal organization that helps with um, other issues related to um, criminal records. All, is, all of us or none is that criminal, um, I'm sorry, is that grassroots civil rights organization that we talked about that was involved in passing this law um, and is still involved in advocacy campaigns. And then we have that SFPL reentry website, which is compiles a bunch of different resources that are local here um, related to reentry. And then you can also always just contact me or contact Katie, you have our phone number, um, you have my phone number and email there, Katie's email. And that's it. Um, and with that, we'll go ahead and go to questions. Let's see, it looks like there's something in the chat now. Um, yes, so you can get copies of the slides. Those will be emailed um, by SFPL after the presentation. Um, oh, thank you, JP already answered. <laughs> Just scroll down. Um, Great, thank you for sharing that, Joseph. Um, the Reentry Employment Network, and is so that's for service providers specifically. Okay. Um, it's service providers, but also um, there are a lot of uh, returning community uh, members and uh, um, people advocating uh, for these issues. Great. Um, okay, so now we want to open it up to questions. So, what questions do you all? Have and I'm, while um, I do that, I'm also going to drop a couple of healthcare-related resources into the chat as well. Yeah, uh, Joseph, thank you for that. Um, and also, if you all, um, if you all don't have any questions, I'll try to join. It. Okay. also have an evaluation which I'm going to drop into the chat which we asked you to fill out just to let us know what you learned from the presentation what was helpful what wasn't um, and if you want to receive um, a copy of our toolkit um, you can also fill that out and just check the box that says yes and then we'll we can mail one to you um, if, as long as you include your email address um, hey, Jerry, hey, I have a question okay yeah go ahead me? Yes, Marie. Oh, okay. Uh, um, like I've, I've been hearing you know, discuss uh, the things dealing with um, like the jobs and whatnot. Like, cause I, I actually got a conviction from, I, I got arrested in, in February of 1796 and I got out uh, last year, February 18, 20, 2020. So some of these things that I ran, ran across, but I was kind of fortunate enough to get a job. But my question is dealing with like, uh, y'all didn't discuss anything dealing with like, housing like because like a few months ago i was uh, kind of fortunate enough to secure housing but i kind of ran into some of these issues but that doesn't relate to 
uh, housing, I, I was saying like some of the rights and whatnot. So that's what I was kind of like tuning in for. But this is going to be helpful moving forward, though. So mm -mm, thank you. And and you know what? Unfortunately, we didn't because this is specifically focused on employment and housing is definitely a problem. Um, you know, there is some local banner box housing ordinances. Um, I was a part of getting one passed here in Oakland, Berkeley and Emeryville. Those are local banner box um, ordinances. And um, there was some effort in 20, not 20, 2019 to take this as a statewide banner box housing bill. Um, unfortunately, that piece of legislation was definitely not even close to what the state law is. And so we had to come out in opposition to that. And so that was in 2019. And so, um, you know, we are definitely waiting and looking for the next opportunity to take this to a statewide level. This year, um, it's pretty, it's hard right now at the, to, to run bills that's not really COVID-19 related and blah, 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 blah. So um, yes, we hear you, housing is a problem. And yeah, and so yeah. I think if, if you're interested in that, so there's no like analog to the California Fair Chance Act and employment for housing right now all across California. And yeah. so that's something that folks right now are trying to work on getting passed, right? And so I really recommend that you reach out to Katie or to all of us or none if you're interested in getting involved in those advocacy efforts. Here in San Francisco, we do have a local law that relates to fair chance housing, but it's pretty limited. It only applies to affordable housing providers. Yeah not private housing. So if you're renting from some, you know, from a landlord who is, gets affordable housing, is an affordable housing provider, then there are restrictions on what they can do. Um, but for the most part, right, employers can do whatever they, or I'm sorry, landlords can do whatever they want right now. Um, and so that, that's why we're trying to create some rights, right, and change, change the laws there, unless you're working with an affordable housing provider. And for that too, um, you can reach out to the San Francisco Human Rights Commission, um, which I will drop in the chat. Yes, so what Stacy said, San Francisco's, yes, it's just a little limited. And even with some of those affording houseable folks, um, Mercy and all those folks, you do still see the question and it can be a little daunting, but, uh, you know, they are also governed by, you know, like federal law and stuff too, that they do have to engage in certain processes and things like that. Um, but yes, housing is a problem for formerly incarcerated people. And welcome home. Yeah, that's right. So that's a good point, Laura. Um, some of the prompts that we mentioned for convictions and interviews and stuff, you can think to use for housing. They're not perfect, but they could help, right? Yeah. So the only difference, right, is that employer or landlords, I keep saying employers because that's what I work with, um, landlords can not can ask those questions up front, right? And can ask those questions on the applications, but you can still try, right? You can still try and say like, there's nothing in my, in my record, right, that would make me a bad tenant. Like I've had a great record of tenancy, you know, here's my last landlord, or, you know, you can try to come up with something to sort of shift them away from focusing on your conviction history and instead back to how you're going to be a good tenant. I've been in Absolutely. for a while now, right? Like Jared, sounds like you, you, you found work and you've been working for a while. And so like, look, I have been employed for a while. I've had a steady job, steady income. I'm going to pay rent on time. Yes, absolutely. And I would even also be including, you know, I mean, it depends on Again, the housing, how bad you want it. You know what I'm saying? If you scared of those questions, you 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 want it, you can include some evidence of rehabilitation. You know, you can include whatever it is that you think is gonna help you. I, you know, like I said, for me, I'm you know, ain't no selling it short. I'm gonna try whatever. Just like you pulling out all the tricks out the bag to stop me, I'm pulling out all the tricks out the bag to help me. That's that's you know, that's how I try to encourage people. And, 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 and yes, like Stacey said too, um, <clears throat> there's a lot of opportunities to get involved in advocacy. Um, I've been involved now for, you know, going on three, three years now. Um, I've been following all of us or none though, since I came, since before I was even locked up. And, 
you know, there's a lot, there's a lot of changes being made. You know, if you don't know, you don't know, and you will think that there's nothing being done behind the scenes and stuff like that. Um, there's a lot of folks out here fighting to try to change. I, well, not a lot, because really it is a small group of us, but we, we, we could use more folks you know, that's ready to get out here and share a story and, and advocate and learn some different things. It's all kind of avenues and programs to teach you this stuff and get you involved. Absolutely. And that's for everybody on here, you know, resource sharing is important. Yeah, and I dropped the, the toolkit um, again in the chat and that has a ton of resources that, you know, we only touch scratch the surface of it has FAQs, like the one about, you know, what do you do if this question gets asked? It has those sample letters, it has sample personal statement letters, it has information on how to get your records. Um, and then I am seeing a question, can you speak more to expungement? What are person's rights and obligations in responding to potential employers, oral or written questions about past criminal history? Um, so with expungement, right, um, if you get your records expunged, then the employers aren't allowed to ask for or use that information, that specific conviction that you got expunged or dismissed. Um, which is just another way of saying expunged um, in making a decision about your record. Um, and so when, when you get something, a conviction dismissed is the legal term um, that's actually like in the, in the, in the law, um, you technically don't have that conviction anymore basically is the implication of it. And so um, that's, and that's why, you know, the legislature through advocacy from incarcerated folks decided, well, then at that point, the employer shouldn't be able to use that information, right, to make a decision about whether or not to hire you um, or whether or not to not revoke your job offer. Um, and so that's why it can be really beneficial to go through the Clean Slate program. Um, and sometimes they'll still come up on background checks, right? We, Katie talked about how there's often errors on background checks, or sometimes they'll come up and it doesn't say it's expunged or dismissed, or it just comes up and it doesn't say anything about it. Um, and so that's why it's important to get your records because then you're able to show, hey, this is this has been dismissed. Here's my record. Here's my documents I got from my SFPD um, defender who helped me do that. And then the employer can no longer use it. So even if they accidentally get it. Um, and then I see a question, but do you answer yes? Have have you been convicted even though expunged? That's a great question. Um, so read the question carefully. It depends on how the question is phrased, right? Right. It's, that if it says, have you ever been convicted? Um, then you should probably, if you want to answer truthfully, you should probably answer yes or not answer at all, right? Or I've had clients, remember one of the things that Katie told you about is that remember to know that you have options, right? You don't have to answer at all. First of all, you can just skip the question. Although sometimes if you're applying online, you're not able to skip, right? Um, if you're applying on paper, you can skip the question. You can answer yes, but expunged or dismissed, right? You can write it in, even if there's only a checkbox, you can say yes, but con conviction dismissed, right? Um, or you can just not answer. Um, as a lawyer, we have to tell you to answer truthfully. Um, if the question is phrased differently, it says, do you have any convictions for felonies? You don't currently have any convictions, right? Um, and so then to that answer, to that question, you could truthfully answer no. Right. Or again, you could skip it. Um, and yes, expunged equals dismissed. Dismissed. sorry. Yeah. Dismissed is what the the legal the actual legal term expunged is nowhere in our laws. Um, but that's what most folks refer to it as, which is why I keep saying both. Those are the same thing. Um, yeah. And then again, reading the question carefully, you know, have you ever been convicted in the last seven years? You know what I'm saying? So you want to be reading the question carefully. Um, yeah, absolutely. And getting stuff cleared up and getting things cleared up and going through these expungement processes, that does sometimes change the way you answer the question. You know, um, let's say if I was convicted of something within the last seven years, but I got that stuff dismissed, I'm checking no. You know, and we're going to figure out, who, you know, it's a lot of gray area too. People complain about that too. You know, it's it's all about how who is interpreting what. You know, so again, reading that question and knowing your background and going through the expungement processes and things like that. Um, it's a lot of laws changing now. Stuff. Um, you're eligible to get stuff 
um, dismissed earlier and stuff now, depending on circumstances? Um, what's the, the new law? If you participated in the firefighting program, you can apply to get your stuff, expunge stuff now. You don't got to wait till you on and on probation, all that stuff. It's a lot of laws changing right now. Um, tapping into communities and getting involved with some of these different groups will help you like, you know, learn some of the different nuances of these different laws. I want to just be confident and say the majority of people on here have heard of the automatic expungement law that passed, I believe that was last year now, AB 1076. Um, so, you know, learning the nuances in these laws and what can be automatically expunged and when and things like that and what you qualify for specifically. You know, it's a lot of laws changing for the good. We're just not hearing about it on the news because all they want to talk about is the EDD fraud. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of laws and, and positive stuff changing that's really aimed at helping folks get jobs. And the same thing too, housing. No, the law ain't no ban a box of housing, but the same thing goes. If I didn't been through these ex 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 expungement clinics and you ask and have, I've been convicted of a felony in the last five years, I'm putting no. Cause I know I've, I've been home about nine. I have been through the clinic, I'm putting no. You know, so it's all kind of benefits and, and stuff changing for the positive out here. I know we passed 11. I got to get ready for my, I got a little another meeting at 1130. Yeah, so feel free to, I'm going to drop my email in the chat. Thank you all. Um, presentation too. Thank you all for joining us and feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions or if any of this, you know, if you face anything like this um, and you want some help. Yes, it was AB 1076. My team. All right. Thank you so much, um, Stacey and Katie. That was a great presentation. And we'll be sending all the participants the recording as well as um, the introductory slides with some library resources for your job search. Um, so thanks again for all of you for attending, and we'll see you at the next program. Bye bye. Later.